The Heckler, real name Stuart Mosley, made his first appearance in The Heckler No. 1, published in 1992 by DC Comics. The character was a collaboration between writer-artist Keith Giffen and writers Tom and Mary Beerbaum. So in the first issue of The Heckler, we meet Stuart Mosley, mild-mannered co-owner of a small Delta City diner called Eats. How imaginative. Unbeknownst to most, or actually a lot of people seem to know about it, Stuart is a quick-witted superhero called the Heckler. Stuart doesn't have any actual superpowers, nor is he even a good fighter. To battle crime, he simply employs his sarcastic wit. Banter, insults, disses, puns, jokes, jests, burns, demeaning comments. You know, he heckles the criminals. This usually drives them into violent frenzies, often leading to them eventually knocking themselves out. Through some miracle, Stuart has been successful at this for quite some time and is making a large dent in the crime organization of Boss Glitter. Boss Glitter, an eccentric mob boss who never shows his face, hiding behind various clownish masquerade ball masks, runs Delta City's underworld. He's the city's flamboyant kingpin. In the first issue, Heckler defeats one of his top lieutenants, El Gusano, a guy who looks like a giant potato. In the following issues, Heckler continues to face off against the Glitter mob and also fends off various assassins sent by the vengeful gangster. Stuart also meets other weird enemies as well as allies. When Keith Giffen conceived the character of the Heckler, he had Bugs Bunny in mind. Bugs Bunny is a superhero, essentially. This is evident with Heckler's constant banter of his foes. And at one point, he even dresses up in drag in order to fool an enemy and make him fall in love. Classic Bugs. The Heckler was intended to be an ongoing series, and DC heavily promoted it in their various comic titles. I've got tons of comics from that time period that feature Heckler ads. It's pretty evident that DC wanted the Heckler to be big, but unfortunately their plans completely failed. Despite all their efforts, the Heckler struggled to find an audience, and not soon after his debut, Keith Giffen himself decided to pull the plug. Seeing the low sales, he asked DC to make number 6 the last issue of the Heckler, and so it was. After a a six issue run, the sardonic misadventures of one Stuart Mosley, aka the Heckler, came to an end. The character never did return after this, at least not in a big way. Heckler has shown up in a few small cameos, though, sort of Easter eggs. And according to Wikipedia, he did show up in the Wii U game Scribble Knots Unmasked, a DC Comics adventure. I can't confirm that, though, as I haven't played it, nor do I even own a Wii U. But if he did appear, it was probably just another cameo. So like I said, my comic book collection is filled with ads for the Heckler, and that's how I knew about the character. I hadn't actually read the series, that is until now, when I decided to do this video. For many years, I've wondered just who the hell this Heckler guy is. He seemed like a cross between the Creeper and the Marvel villain Madcap. Now that I've read it, what do I think? I'm not quite sure actually. I liked it, yet kinda didn't like it. It's a very silly series, not serious in the slightest. It's absurd, weird and just plain insane. A bit like a Doom Patrol comic, I suppose. The character of Stuart Mosley is never really explored. We never really find out why he fights crime and there is no origin story. He simply feels that someone has to do something about Delta City's problems. That's really all we're told. For some reason, he also struggles as a co-owner of a dying with the other owner barely ever showing up for work. A running gag is Stuart trying to get the sign outside spelled right. It's supposed to say eats, but always seem to spell something else like fats or feats. This gag is really in the background, being mentioned while other more important dialogue is going on. There's lots of that in the series. Meaningless background dialogue that serves as comedy. It's pretty fun, but at the same time a bit confusing, as sometimes you have no idea who's really talking. Anyway, I suppose Stuart isn't meant to make sense. This isn't a character character study. Heckler is just a vehicle for crazy, absurd and comedic adventures. That's really all this series is. It is pretty funny too, a lot funnier than Funny Man was, in case you're wondering. Ironically, it's not really the Heckler himself I find that funny, but the supporting cast and villains. One of the funniest characters is the chef who works at Eats. He's a stereotypical snobby French chef who takes his cooking very seriously, regarding it as an art form, obviously completely out of place in a shabby diner. Now the rogues gallery of Delta the city is for sure one of the weirdest out there. They're very much in line with Doom Patrol villains. I already mentioned Boss Glitter and El Gusano, and besides them, we've got John Doe, the generic man. This odd character is a complete blank and has no personality whatsoever. He wishes to make the rest of Delta City the same way, and has the power to do that with a mere touch. He can turn anything, including people and objects, into generic blanks just like himself. He's also got a sidekick called Buckshot, a woman who can fire bullets from her freckles. Yeah. 
Then of course there's Bushwhacker, an assassin sent by Boss Glitter. This expert hitman is a parody of Wile E. Coyote, going perfectly with the Looney Tunes theme. Bushwhacker tries to kill Heckler with various elaborate traps, but they always end up backfiring in one way or another. The running gag is that Bushwhacker gets more and more bandaged up throughout the story, suffering at the hands of his own traps, until he's in a full body cast and confined to a wheelchair. Throughout all of this, Heckler never even notices Bushwhacker's assassination attempts. Another villain is the Cosmic Clown, an assassin clown robot from space. He flees to Earth wishing to escape his profession, but then runs into our regular clowns. Thinking they're like him, he sets out to kill them all and end their murderous ways. Then we've got Cest Hay, a living French killer scarecrow who likes to put on a show and fancies himself an actor. Needless to say, it's a very bizarre rogues gallery. If you like weird, bizarre and silly stuff, then the Heckler is certainly for you. I myself do like it too, but I can't call it truly great. I think my biggest issue is actually with the art and the panel layouts. Giffen's art is sometimes very confusing and you can't really tell what the hell's going on, and each page looks exactly the same. Three rows of three equally sized panels. Every page, except for the opening pages, are like that. It's like the Legion of Superheroes reboot of that same era, which was also by Giffen and the Beer Bombs. Also, Watchmen was like that. I don't get why they do that. It doesn't look very good and cramps everything together. Is it something I'm missing here? Is it supposed to be symbolic of something? Create some kind of suggestive pattern or effect? Either way, I don't get it and I don't like it. So there you have it, that's the Heckler, DC's forgotten comedy superhero. If the series had gone on for a few years instead of just 6 issues, it could have been a cult classic. But as it stands, the Heckler is just a curious footnote in the long publication history of DC Comics. As always, remember Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.